time for chapter 14 of Woods Runner by Gary Pawson. Last time we left Samuel with a new friend. Samuel and Annie met Abner and he is a Scottish uh, tinker. So he peddles things which means he has this great big wagon full of junk uh, and he goes around selling the junk. Um, and he has decided to help Annie and Samuel. He protected them from the cavalry um, because he found them in the woods. So let's see how they get to know each other. First, here's a little information on New York City, which is where they're headed. New York was the main city where prisoners of the British troops were held. By the end of 1776, there were over 5,000 prisoners in New York, and since the population of the city was only 25,000, more than 20% of the people within city limits were captives. At that time, there, were, there was only one prisoner, uh, there was only one prison in New York. So the British held their prisoners in warehouse buildings or on Royal Navy ships anchored in the harbor. Although these ships were built to hold 350 sailors, the British kept over 1,000 prisoners at a time on board. The only latrines, aka bathrooms, were buckets, which soon became full and spilled into the prisoners' sleeping quarters. Ugh. Disease was rampant. At first, an average of five or six prisoners died on these ships every day. In the end, more American soldiers died in prison than in actual combat. Oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine being a prisoner on a ship? and your bathroom just slipping into your bedroom. Ugh. Okay, chapter 14. Let's just hope Samuel's parents aren't on a ship. Chapter 14. Abner sat silent for a long time after Samuel had finished telling the story of the attack and the raid, although he was less bloody in telling than he might have been because Annie was listening. At length, Abner coughed and spit tobacco juice between the meals. So you're thinking your folks are in New York? It's a guess. From what I understand, Philadelphia is in American hands. I don't think the British would take them there. Caleb heard them talking about going to New York. And once you're in New York, you're going to find them somehow. And then you're going to take your little shooter there, go into loop in there, and shoot your way out. Well, no. I mean, I don't know. Right. Right in the middle of the whole British army, you're going to sneak in and take them clean away. When you put it that way, I guess I heard they got 14,000 troops for the battle to take Brooklyn Heights alone. The Continentals never had a chance, started running before the fight started. They probably got 20, 25,000 troops swarming all over the area, and you're going to jump in the middle of them. It'll be like climbing into a swarm of bees. I don't have a plan just yet. All I know is to follow them as best as I can and then work on something if I find them. When I find them. You know what I think? Abner looked at him. No, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. Yes, sir. I mean... No, I don't know what you think. I think you need help from an old coot and a couple of dogs. That's what I think. You'd do that? Couldn't that land you in a lot of trouble? I mean, you've got a pass that lets you go places. Why would you want to help us and risk losing the pass? Abner snorted. Ain't no pass at all. Got a friend in Philadelphia with a printing press. I had him make me a peck of forms with a date blank and a place for somebody to sign. Official looking. I just fill in the blank with the right general's name and sign it. Works every time. That still doesn't answer the question. About helping us? Samuel watched the dogs move to the front of the mules, one on either side, looking ahead intently, then dropped back. Somebody's coming, Annie said. She'd seen the dogs move. Shouldn't we stop? Not soldiers, Abner said, shrugging and spitting. Just people traveling, maybe getting out of New York. And was it soldiers? Was it soldiers? The dogs would have stayed up front, kept watching. 
How do they know? Abner shook his head. No way to know unless you're a dog. They kind of feel things. In the air, maybe? Along the ground? Sometimes they'll put their noses down and tell it that way. But they're always right. And they were right this time. A freight wagon was coming, not as full as Abner's, and pulled by a team of oxen rather than mules. There was a man walking on one side of the oxen, carrying a wooden staff, which he used to guide them, and a woman walking on the other side. On the wagon seat, there were two children, probably three and four years old. They passed head on, and Samuel thought neither of them would say anything. The man just nodded at Abner, but before he was well past, Abner called, Dragoons ahead, patrolling the, patrol the road west. Thank ye, the man said with a nod. We're obliged for the knowledge, but we're going south at the turn, headed down to Philadelphia, if and it's still held. Held solid? Good journey, Abner said. For you and the family, good health. The same to you. And they were gone. Why didn't the British soldiers come after them? Do they have a pass? Probably not. I doubt anybody really gets a pass like mine, but the soldiers aren't always a problem. Sometimes they take things, act up rough, but other times they seem to follow some kind of rule, lest they be Hessians. They even, then, even the past might not work. He shook his head. They ain't nothing good about Hessians. They were born bad. Annie nodded. She had been so quiet, Samuel almost forgotten she was still there, sitting between them. Her voice was brittle, like it could break in the middle of a word. They're all bad. It will be years, Samuel thought, before she can forget. Maybe her whole life. And I don't blame her. I feel the same. And I didn't see my parents bayoneted. The thought of his parents brought back the memory of the question he had asked Abner, which had not been answered. We never heard why you want to help us, he said. Couldn't make trouble for you? No more I can make for myself. Still, you're pushing this, ain't you? Abner smiled. Though the hair on his spit. Uh, though in the hair, with the spit, stains, it was hard to tell that he smiled at all. Kind of like a root hog digging at it. Ugh. I want to know. It doesn't make sense. You don't know anything about us, but you'd risk trouble to help us? You've got to admit, it seems strange. I mean, I'm grateful, mighty grateful, but... Well, thinking on it, there's two reasons. We're listening. First, when you get old and start to smell an end to things, your brain starts doing things on its own, whether you like it or not. You might be looking at a piece of meat cooking on a fire, hungry and ready to eat, or sitting up here alone watching the mules pull on a lazy sunny afternoon, and your brain starts in adding and subtracting, measuring your life. What do you mean? And he looked up at him. Well, it says you've done many things wrong and many things right, like a ledger with the line down the middle. Maybe you helped somebody load a wagon once, and that would go on the good side. Then maybe you ate a piece of pie somebody else wanted, somebody else deserved, and that would go on the bad side. Well, we all do that, don't we? Samuel asked. Think about things and then try to do the right one. We can hope so, but until you get old, you don't really start adding them up. When you're young, you forget some of the things, both good and bad. But when you get old, it's amazing how much you remember. I keep pulling up parts of my life from when I was barely off the milk, bawling after my mum in Scotland. I stole a tiny piece of bread, and I wasn't supposed to eat on the ship on the way here. And that's in there, waiting to be added in even though I puked it up not two minutes after I ate it. He snorted and spit, this time almost to the noses of the mules. I wasn't one for sailing. The boat rocked once and the first time I got on it, and I was sick all the way across. He stopped the wagon because they met some young men on foot, obviously fleeing. There were three of them, and one had bandages across his upper left arm. They waved, but kept moving west alongside the trail at a trot. Abner warned the men about the cavalry, and they nodded. 
Samuel thought they should be moving off to the side of the trail, into the bush, but he didn't say anything. They probably knew more than he did, since they'd been fighting. He was very glad that he and Annie had run into Abner, but knew if they hadn't, they would have traveled as much as possible as possible in the thick brush. In the woods was life. Out here in the open? You said two, Samuel said, watching the men until they were out of sight. If the cavalry were coming back, they would be caught, probably killed. It all seemed so crazy. Men walking down the road, somebody coming along and killing them. Two reasons to help us. What was the other one? Well, the first one was almost rubbish. I mean, it's true, but maybe a little too flowery to be real. I like the way it sounds, though. Almost like it might be written somewhere. Anna chuckled. Being alone, most of the time, I don't get much of a chance to flower things up. Maybe I should write it down. Somebody might read it sometime and think I was more than I really am. Lord, Samuel thought, for somebody who spends most of his time alone, he sure does like to hear his own voice. He waited. But the second is quick. The truth is that I'm too old to fight. Abner laughed. Annie jumped and Samuel realized she had been dozing. I like a good scrap and I'm too old for this one. So I go back and forth with the news, try to help. You're a spy? No, no, no. That's not... That's too hard of a word, though I expect these red coats would hang me proper if they knew. I go back and forth with news about things that are happening that someone might be interested in hearing about. I sell a little, I buy a little, and I carry a word now and then, and I help them that needs it when I can. I can't really fight. My bones would break. But if I help those who are against the red coats, it's right close to fighting. I can't stand the red coats. And you don't like him either. Isn't that good enough for you? Samuel nodded, watching the dogs move up the trail and back again. That's good enough for me. And thank you for your help. And that concludes chapter 14. So now we uh, know a lot more about Abner. And he would prefer to fight, but since he can't, in his old age, he's taken it upon himself to do as many kind things for the right reasons as possible. And now we know that Samuel and Annie are not alone. And they're going to have help to try and rescue the parents. So they don't have a plan, but they're going to do something. And I'm excited to see what that is. Take notes. See you tomorrow.